you have joined us in starting up now most investors invest in as many as 5 to 10 startups a year but here's somebody who invests in over a 100 we're talking about dave mcclure who of course recently brought to india the geeks on a plane contingent some of the smartest startup techies from across the world so there is yaar caught up with a man for this exclusive chat Yes, someone who has certainly turned a lot of heads in the early age ecosystem in America is Super Angel Dave McClure. Uh, Founder of 500 Startups, which has innovated with a disruptive mechanism of investing in over 100 companies every year. He visited India recently with his geeks, mentors, startups and entrepreneurs all of whom are working on innovative technologies of their own. We caught up with him at the Direct Eye Geeks on a Plane Summit and started the interview by asking him about the disruptive 500 startups model of investing. So what we're really trying to do is similar to kind of taking the lean startup model to the venture capital business. Uh, so we intend to make a lot of small investments. Uh, we realize there's going to be a high fail rate for those businesses, but the capital efficiency allows us to do a lot more small experiments than we ever used to before. And then once uh, some percentage of those investments start working, then we continue to invest more in those companies. So, but Dave, is it fair to say that the new model is spray and pray? Well, I would say it's spray, but not pray. Okay. Uh, so, is really, there a science behind investing in 300 companies? Yeah, I mean, I, I think so because a lot of people tend to, you know, sort of suggest that what we do is basically the equivalent of gambling, and I, I really think that's not not true at all. So, there's a science behind it. Yeah, in fact, and what I would think, the science be? Well, so when we look at companies, we're really trying to get them through three stages: uh, product, market, and revenue. Uh, you know, we might, you know, have a very high fail rate of anywhere from 60 to 80 percent of those companies. But let's say that we start with 100 investments uh, as they're building out product and being successful. Maybe you know 30 of the companies are successful getting to some level of product functionality uh, and get to the next level of funding. Uh, of those 30, then maybe let's say half you know are successful in getting some amount of customer adoption. So now we're down to 15. And then let's say you know of those 15, maybe anywhere from five to 10 get to revenue at some scale. Um, so now, out of 100 initial companies, we've really come down to five or ten companies that are really the ones that are working and hopefully and generating right. revenue. And that's actually a manageable number. Okay. Now let's contrast that with the typical large uh, venture right, investing, you where you know they might make only one or two investments per year. They might only make. So know, let's assume they make say eight investments a year. Yeah. Well, I mean, as a partnership, they might. Right. But let's say for the lifetime of the fund, they probably only make 30 investments. Now, sure. in our case, our goals are really. Anywhere from 25 to 250 million dollar sort of stories or exits. I think for larger VCs, they're really aiming for billion dollar or better uh, companies. So, you know, making 30 investments and having to find three to five, you know, one billion dollar better stories—that's a very, very difficult story. Sure. You know, so I think that a lot of cases, what we do is, you know, commonly referred to as, you know, spray and pray. But what we would really call it is a method for quantitative and scalable investing. Where we are being more efficient about how capital is being deployed. Sure, so, Dave, what are some of the factors in your opinion that have contributed to this new form, new model where you invest in right. many more companies? So starting about 10 years ago, a substantial reduction in cost in building internet businesses, or at least let's say, you know, web and mobile businesses. Um, so it used to be 10 years ago, maybe 12 years ago, you paid for you know servers, you paid for a large amount of enterprise licensed software, had to pay a lot of money for bandwidth. Um, those things are really starting to change. Where most all those things are in the cloud, uh, a lot of them are free or using open source software, and so we don't really buy servers. You know, we buy bandwidth, maybe a little bit, uh, and a lot of our software is free. So most of the remaining cost is really headcount. Uh, the second trend is really starting about five years ago. We've had the advent of lots and lots of major online platforms for customer acquisition. So not just Google for search. But Facebook and Twitter for social, maybe LinkedIn for professional networks. We've got Apple and Android for uh, for mobile devices. We have we have YouTube for video. You folks have sort of seen a sweet spot at between 50 and 100k. Yeah. Uh, any particular reasons for that amount? We really think that the 50 to 100 thousand dollars is enough money for people to get a set of experiments. You know, maybe it's anywhere from 12 to 24 person months. You know, enough time for a team of two or three to really prove out a set of experiments. Where did the 500 startups idea really come from? Was it an idea, or was it something that just happened? 
Well, I think it was very organic and it was, you know, based on my understanding of how I started doing angel investing and then how I started doing some professional investing when I was at Founders Fund. Uh, when I first left PayPal, I didn't have a lot of money. Uh, I put about 300000 into 12 companies over a period of maybe four years. Uh, I was still making a lot of mistakes, but learning. And uh, I happened to have one, you know, relatively good exit in Mint.com. Uh, but what I found was that it really takes a long time and you probably need a portfolio approach to investing. See, the big question is, um, is uh, Dave plans to invest in 500 startups. He's already invested in over 200 of them, or at least a fund has, right? Yes. So how does Dave have the bandwidth to manage over <laughs> 200 companies? Is he Superman? Well, uh, I'd like to think I'm Superman, but actually uh, we're a team. So, so how, how does it just work me. exactly? How does the model work? Well, we have uh, a team of about 10 people that are doing various functions in the, uh, in the fund. Uh, probably about four of us are managing investments. Uh, we also do many other things, but um, you know we're able to split up the time between the companies that we work with. Uh, and really, again, I think we're we're spending more time with the companies that progress further, right. you know, down that you know success path. Right. Is it an incubator model built in as well? Because it's sort of a yes. loose. It's a loose model where you either have incubation or no incubation. Well, right? we we do a little bit of both. So right. we both run an incubator and we have a seed fund. Sure. So we we do about 25 to 30 companies three times a year through our own program. And how many months is that? Uh, it's typically a four-month program. Uh, we run a demo day at the end of that where we try and introduce those companies. And then they move, out of, the, they move out of the area. Then. And hopefully if they're successful in getting those, then you know, they probably pop out, start uh, their own little office or something. What is Dave McClure's thinking behind investing in Asia? Well, I think that we've probably done about 10% of our portfolio outside the U.S., uh, maybe even 20% that's incorporated in the U.S. but has some international connection. Right. Um, our general views are there's talent spread all over the world. Uh, there's definitely developing markets all over the world. And in many cases, the prices we have to pay to invest in those companies are lower in some of those markets than we would pay in uh, Silicon Valley. Sure. So we think there's a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of value there, uh, opportunities to sort of invest in new markets that are still developing, and maybe some opportunity to take models that we see working in the U.S. and bring them over to those markets. Hey, Dave, you spent some time in India as well, and uh, you also made some investments here. Why don't you take us through uh, some investments sure. here and what your thoughts are on the Indian product ecosystem? Well, I think we're very bullish on India, particularly after seeing it up close now for a few, uh, a few days. Right. Um, I've been a personal investor in SlideShare in Delhi, uh, known the founders for about three or four years. Uh, we've also been recent investors in a company called MyGola out of Bangalore that's a Q&A based travel site. What are your thoughts on the Indian product ecosystem? Do you think there's, uh, there's something happening here? Because uh, one, big, one big advantage in America is there's this um, middle layer in terms of an M&A market which makes it easier for smaller companies to get acquired and so on. Where yeah. India we're still looking for the ecosystem to build. So the M&A exists that happen, happen at a much higher level. Uh, what are some of the other fundamental differences you see between here and the Valley? Well, I think uh, if you look out over the horizon the next two to five years, I think you will see more exits happening, both at large and small scale. Uh, I think you have a tremendously talented workforce here that's got a lot of engineering resources. Probably the areas they do need you know, more training and more education is in design and usability, sure. Sure. possibly in product management or marketing. Okay. So those are areas I think you know, where we might be able to help with you know, either bringing some of those folks here or you know, helping teach and educate the companies about what those resources could be. Probably the most critical resource is uh, capital and angel investors and I think you know as much as people complain about the the talent being the issue I don't really think that's the issue I think it's usually the propensity of angel investors or seed funds to put money to work. Dave, another big development in America and something that you're very closely involved with is Naval Ravi Khan's angel list. Right? Yes. And he's uh, set up something massive which has sort of become like a LinkedIn for startups or it's sort of become a, a place where the entire community comes together. Uh, what are your thoughts on angel list and, um, and how much value does it add to your daily life? Well, I think it adds a tremendous amount of value to us. Uh, we're probably one of the most active uh, investors in uh, uh, using AngelList right now. In fact, I think we're probably the number one most active. We started early. I mean, Naval uh, gave me a call and let you know we know that he was getting this started and asked us to participate. And we were, you know, pretty uh, tentative at first, but I said we've been, you know, very passionate, and enthusiastic more recently. Um, he's really built a tremendous community. You know, he started out doing venture hacks as really education for entrepreneurs. Uh, now he's built a resource for both entrepreneurs and investors. And I would say, you know, we've probably done at least 50, if not 60 or more deals uh, through AngelList in one way or another. Dave, just closing off, uh, you've been involved in multiple startup success stories. You have a number of companies in your portfolio. Yep. So off, uh, and what's the exact number? What's the exact number you're writing? I think right now it's probably about 243. So after 243, Dave, if you were to pick three or pick five, what would they be? <laughs> well, as I like to say, all of my children are beautiful. Absolutely. Uh, Dave's favorites. 
Some are a little bit more beautiful than sure. others. Sure. Uh, definitely, I would say Twilio for voice and SMS platforms. Probably Wildfire Interactive, which does social marketing campaigns for agencies and brands and even Facebook themselves. Uh, maybe SendGrid, which does email deliverability and really is in use by a wide variety of both enterprise companies and startups. They have a uh, number of entrepreneurs watching the show and you've sort of uh, been the catalyst for a number of startups in America. Uh, if you had one message for all the entrepreneurs in India looking to start up and waiting to take that uh, final step, what would the advice be? Well, I think really focusing on a uh, customer and a problem. So don't get too stuck on the, our geeky technology. I mean, we know technology is fun and that's great, but I think the opportunity is to use technology for the benefit of society and to really help make people's lives better. Yeah.